ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble! You're unbelievable. You're so unbelievable. This is Lighting the Bull. And now, you lost Joe. I <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Broadcasting from the Forest Tower Studios in the Mossy Creek Bottoms of Cane Creek, Arkansas. I'm Joe Roop, and this is Lighting the Void. Your voice for verity in this stupid realm of polarity. Good evening. It is Tuesday, May the 8th, and the night is stellar. It's kind of warm here in the natural state as the moon wanes on to midnight. Fire up your chakras, sink both hemispheres of your brain together, and shoot your magical beam of light through your third eye tonight with us. As we peer into the void between spirituality and science. Tonight, we're going to get real with the one and only Corin Wilson, the occult priestess. You know, this show is another one of the reasons why we do this. Because it's time to get real. And I mean really real. And I love uh, Corin because she keeps it real with me. You know, if she's got something against what I've said or something I've done, she'll tell me. And uh, that I believe that is a mark of a true friend, and she's going to be with us tonight. And it's going to be a really cool show. We will take your questions or call-ins. The chat room is in Spreaker if you want to check that out, because we're going to get into some deep subjects with Corin. And um, this is probably a show that needs to happen. Stop playing around, will you? Now, let's bring on our guest, Corin Wilson, the occult priestess is educated and experienced in the psychic arts, Reiki, alternative healing, tarot, psychology, symbolic interpretation, Buddhism, 12-step recovery counseling, cleansing and purification, state of consciousness, shamanic soul counseling, ascension, kundalini rituals, spellcraft, soulcraft, star seeds, spiritual warfare, psychic self-defense, world mythology, hidden history, and many, many ancient traditions. Tonight, we're going to be discussing this whole Illuminati thing, the truth of that. A little bit of questions I have about the second death. Things that she feels like are important to discuss. You know, Corin keeps up with the zeitgeist in this movement, in this truth movement. And she's doing real good work. She's not afraid to say anything to anybody. And I love her for that. She holds nothing back. But she is also a vessel for the God energy of Hermes, who is her master soul guide, often assisting her in her work and study. Now, she's attained great awareness of her soul, her star seed origins, her past lives, and her missions here on Earth. She is a psychopomp, walking between the worlds and guiding souls to the truth of oneness. And her website is occultpriestess.com. The links are on the website. Thank you, Corin, for coming back on the show. It's awesome to have you here with us again. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, everyone. Soul brothers, soul sisters, as we gather here this evening together. In knowledge and education, we gather in the flame. Yeah, you know, I, I specifically called you today, and I want to tell everybody this. I said, listen, I'm going to do a little bit of a rant, and I could have rant, you know, did a lot more on that. But I felt like I could feel I was going to get angry, so I just kind of laid off a little bit. I might rant to the subscribers if they want to hear it. But she said on the phone earlier, she said, well, I tell you what, just call me when you're done with that. I don't want to get that icky crap all over me. And I was like, you got it. I'll make sure I call you afterwards. See what I'm talking about? I love your honesty. Thank you. And, you know, it's important for me to tell people who I am and to be authentically me. And that's important for everyone. But I feel like I've cultivated some very strong morals and good judgment, basically. And I'd like to pass that on because I had great teachers too. And I think that just as brothers and sisters, not as I know more than you, I'm cooler than you or any of that competition BS, right? But to build each other up. And that's why I identify with Wonder Woman so much <laughs> because it's all about everyone having a good experience together. And People with more gnosis or knowledge or wisdom, it is their job to help their brothers and sisters when they allow it. I believe you. I'm, that's really cool. I, you know, I, let me ask you a question. I've had a few people say, 
Joe, you've got all these people talking to you, and this is for everybody here, and I want to know your advice about this. I've had someone tell me that I should tighten my circle, which means, like, you know, only tighten your circle with those people that you're fanning each other's flame, and then let the rest just kind of do whatever. But, I mean, in my mind, Corin, people are human. They're not always just going to be fanning your flame. So, I don't know. I, I, I have doubts about that, too, you know? I know that you have a good heart, <laughs> and I don't think we have to be psychic to know that. And your heart tells you when someone is tugging on you the wrong way, when they're asking you to mother them in a very codependent, sick, egoistic way. And it is, you know, tell me I'm pretty, basically, is what they're asking for. <laughs> tell me I'm pretty, Joe. I tell need that I'm validation. Beautiful. Yeah, they want validation. And now that you're in a position where you can validate them being the fringe FM dude, that puts you in an awkward position with people who you're not very close to. So I agree with that advice. Keep, you know, the inner sanctum versus the greater outer sanctum, especially somebody who's in the limelight. Because... You're open to spiritual attack a lot, you know. Of course, we we do the work and we get the protection, but it doesn't mean that we're not actually being attacked, even if it doesn't reach us. Cortana wants to know if she should sage herself after having to listen to what I said. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, actually. I didn't see any demons or anomalies coming out of your head. It was really mature. Well, I think some of it might be me, and I think we need to check ourselves a lot, you know. Uh, That's my entire point. Check yourself. Check your head. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, yo. I'm, I'm a little insensitive at, at times. I like, you know, when you go to school and you hear that rumor, oh, so-and-so's got a problem with you, man. They got a problem with you. I was always that guy in school that walked up to him. It's like, hey, what's up, man? You know, you got a problem. Let's sort it out. Right? I didn't want to just drag it on. I wanted to move on. And it makes people uncomfortable, I think, when I'm that way. Well, who cares? Because what they're dealing with is secrets and lies. Yeah. Secrets so, and lies. That sounds yes. kind of, that sounds kind of cool, but it's not. <laughs> it's cool evil, if you right. like that. <laughs> no, I don't. Just playing. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're insecure themselves. And that's the only reason why people attack other people, because they are. It's an intellectual fear. And the body takes over, and it becomes a physical danger. And that's when people go psycho. Well, and another thing, too, is I think when it comes to checking ourselves, we need to be honest. Like, you know, hey, I do get emails about people telling me how great I am. But that doesn't mean I'm that great as far as this this business goes, you know? I mean, we've got other show hosts and other people out there that are killing it. And, a lot you know, of times that's they know reality. We need to understand reality is what I'm saying. And then move from there. That's a consensus. And I'm telling you to get out of the big consensus pool. This is all about knowing yourself and then setting the pace for others. You understand as a leader. Yeah. So don't worry about pop culture. Don't worry about what's hip and what's cool in that sense, because everything eternal and always cool, anciently cool is within you. If you want to know what my insecurities are, those are my insecurities. Am I good enough for those people? I still say you have to find somewhere within yourself where you feel like this is your mission. You're walking a plank and you got to do it, do or die. Right. Yeah, I hear you. So, so there let's, you go. It's not all about other people either, because what you're really describing here is a lot of codependency. Uh, including myself. Of course, yes. Yeah. And there's ways to go through that as well, especially since you do meditate. And because you meditate, you are light years ahead of most people. Well, I am codependent on those people. I can tell you that right now. And codependency that, can be healed. I healed my own codependency. Well, so let, let's get into this. So you wanted to talk to, about the Illuminati and stuff. And I've seen this, uh, you know, I've seen people create posts about it to create controversy just for marketing reasons alone. But how many people out there are really trying to get down to the truth of this subject? Not, I don't see many looking at this thing, you know, besides Freeman. He does pretty good with it. 
And thank goodness, now Freeman's on the Fringe FM network. That's just blowing my mind. Yeah, so you got me off tangent. He talked about there were two Illuminatis, the one with Adam Weishaupt and then the Bavarian Illuminati, right? There we got labels again. Okay. So the easiest way to talk about this is go to Zen school and say, Let, let's make this a black and white chessboard. Let's make this as simple as possible. And I think all of us in our childhoods were programmed with good and evil. Would you agree that basically America is set on up on the paradigm of good versus evil? Yes. I agree. Okay. So from there, I mean, that's the simplest term, black versus white. Now, if you start researching that or spiritually understanding that, it's going to be a big teaching, a big, 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 big lesson, okay? But to boil it down, we will understand the yin is female, is black. That is a principle. The yang is white. It's positive. And that is a principle. So you've got masculine is the yang, the sun, right? Mm -hmm. The feminine is the yin, the moon. The masculine is the projector. It sends out energy. The female brings energy within her. She is the lotus. She allows, you know, the mother. She gestates the baby. So we have these two very large principles in this world that we say are masculine and feminine. But as we lowered in consciousness, which means our souls used to be a lot more awake than they are now. We are in third density. We are the lowest we can go and still have consciousness. This is the level we are raising and cleaning up from. So we're coming from this root level, if you will. But we had to descend, or some religions say, fall to the flesh. So, like, I see. Hold on, right there. So when I when I read the text about how I've always thought that but this big question in my mind about the Christ story, right? You know, um, Lucifer. They talk about how Lucifer has fallen. That's the only verse in the Bible. And then they talk about how Christ is risen. And I was thinking, well, what if that's just a a reaffirmation of consciousness, how it's fallen and how it's rising? Because they both call themselves the Morning Star, the bright I Morning think that- Star. It's a beautiful point. It's a poetic point, even. And I can take it back to my first religion, Egypt. And then we see Osiris, the patriarch under Ra. Osiris ruled on earth, physical, and then was killed by evil, his brother, his twin, Set. And then Isis, with Anubis, refashioned Osiris in the underworld, and he was resurrected as an underworld god where he overtook the judgment in the halls of Amenti. But basically, when you, as an Egyptian soul from Sirius, when you died, you went to the hall and you got to see your dad, basically, Osiris, and then you passed into what we call our heaven, our specific realm, which is really Sirius. Wow. And we didn't travel alone either. <laughs> usually we would die in groups and sometimes that was seen as a group suicide but the thing is is that we could see beyond death it wasn't a, a, a guess it wasn't oh I think it was we've been dreaming this for 20 years and we know it's time because our souls were not in the density of the flesh as deep as we are now. We were not in what we call the forgetfulness. And there's a reason why we came into the forgetfulness. Why? To eat the apple of the black and white, to eat the apple of the tree of good and evil, the knowledge, right? Knowledge is not wisdom. <laughs> wisdom is cultivated. Knowledge can be read in a newspaper. They said the ocean is 3,000 leagues. Yes, you can measure that. Awesome. Good for you. Yay. But what is the reflection of the ocean when it is reflected upon the heavens? And are the heavens celestial, astral, liquid realms? Or are they physical realms with metal spaceships? So these are the kind of thinking that we used to have. We used to be a lot more imaginative, metaphoric, spiritual. And it's almost as if our consciousness was so high, we were on LSD all the time. <laughs> it was an enchanting 
lifetimes back then, but we fell to flesh to eat the apple, good and evil knowledge. And that is, I believe, how we grew what we call new souls, the souls of earth. And I believe the people that helped these souls grow through teachings, through wisdom schools, are back again because they also, some of us, like me, went through the reincarnations with mankind to evolve our souls as well through the earth process or the earth school. And mankind will graduate to what we call light bodies or the angelic realm. And some could argue that's where they fell from in the first place. Yeah, so the re- reincarnation thing, right? I want to get this out of the way because I don't want to. I don't want to focus on the negative stuff. But you said something to me that really freaked me out one day, and I've always wondered what it was because I know the biblical text just didn't get there out of nowhere, right? And you know, they talked about the second death, and. I used to study on that. Like, really, there's not a lot of stuff out there that tells you what that means, right? And so, yeah, if there's a reason why that's hidden in the hidden. So I was not thinking, even out is, in the open. What is that? And I and I started to feel like try to listen to my higher self, and it really scared me when I got the answer that it was the death of my conscious self. You know, not yeah. really my soul, but my awareness. And then I had to start over or something. And I'm like, God, I hope that's wrong. You know, what is, what is well, that, that all about? Intuitively, I, I believe you got the right answer for yourself there. And it doesn't it feel like you were looking on someone else's paper, like this wasn't going to happen to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're just getting the information. So I actually came across it the first time with William Blake. And he said that we are put here by a brotherhood of light to circumvent this satanic death. And so we can say falling to the flesh was voluntary for those in the angelic realm and higher. All right. Got that? We fell to the flesh. It wasn't guilty. It wasn't a bad thing. And what does falling to the flesh mean? Five senses. You're not really that intuitive anymore. You're not really listening for God anymore. You're looking at that new pair of shoes or that new car. Materialism. Okay. So we fell into materialism. Some of us always fought against the program because that's who we are. But others took to the bit like a slave, right? Yes. I know what you're talking about there, being led around by materialism too. Right. And now in modern times, I believe it's black magic. We do have people who say they have sold their souls to Satan or darkness. They've sold their souls for fame and riches. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People have actually come out and admitted it. Yeah, you're right. And they re- they're always remorseful, aren't they? Mm hmm. Like always. There's never hell. Yeah, I can't believe this. This is so awesome. It's like winning a lottery. <laughs> No, they're freaking scared. They're scared shitless. Excuse right. my language. No, I understand. It's okay. It <laughs> they are. They're they're mortally scared. Like they can't sleep at night type of scared. They have everything in the world. They have no real friends. Anyway, you can imagine what that's like. It's their own circle of hell with caviar, basically. And the second death, if you do not graduate through some of your past lives, if you do not improve yourself, if you keep choosing bad life after life after life, you become the parasite eats you. You become the cancer. You can lose your divinity and become entirely a beast. And that is when that body passes, you will not be given any more bodies. You will no longer be able to reincarnate on the earth plane ever. That's scary. Well, that doesn't mean that you don't have an existence somewhere else, but it means that you failed and you are not going to be invited back here. And you really believe that, huh? I kind of know it. Like Mark Passio would say, if you know something and you tell people you know it, then I would say I know this. I respect that. So what do we need to do to make sure that doesn't happen? Don't sell your soul to the devil, silly. <laughs> well, not, I mean, duh, but I mean... Are you saying that's all correct choices? It's all about, first of all, self-love. Number one, 
And what does self-love mean? Narcissism? Uh, no, do you think that's really love? So what is love? I mean, we got to start at square one, right? So good and bad. You understand intellectually that eating Lucky Charms is bad for you. I love Lucky Charms. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> But you understand it's got GMO creepy things that can like totally alter your DNA and turn your penis into a vagina, right? I'm done with Lucky Charms. <laughs> it's not that lucky, man. So I'm saying just every day, if you are mindful, which is a Buddhist practice, thank you, Buddhist mindfulness, going through the practices of it will teach you to hear yourself, to know your thoughts and to know yourself. So I really truly believe the first step from black, which is just being veiled, just being hoodwinked, you don't know anything yet, take a leap of faith and step from that little black square of I don't know to the white square of I want to know, I desire to know. Hmm. Unlucky charms. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so that's where I'm at. I feel like I'm there. That that's just what I, I want to know. But I let's think, say I want to know, and then we don't listen. That's it. Are you going to be humble? This is a thing. It's an ego situation. So you, most of us, were in one way or another beat up. As children, psychologically, emotionally, in some way, we were damaged greatly. Even if our family was awesome, our society wasn't. And we saw war and famine and all these horrible things. So understand that we're coming from a place of trauma. We're not coming from a place of, da, 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 I can rule the world. I'm so confident. Everything is awesome. We are not those people. We are warriors. And we're tired of the struggle. And that's when you get washed up on the beach and things kind of get peaceful for a minute. You can hear the birds and then a book drops on your foot. And that's when me and my friends and everybody who we call the Great White Lodge, the Great White Brotherhood, the Illuminati, we come to you in your mind and we begin to speak to you and love you and teach you. And that's the thing I think that scared me the most is that something that didn't have a body was going to talk to me. Yeah, right. I get that because I've, I've actually experienced that a little bit. I know you have. So that makes you special that you've already heard, quote, quote, seen them with your third eye. Ooh, you've special. already been. Yes, you've been in communion. You've had tea with these uh, great beings and these great beings are teachers. They love you. They're not about to try to take over and jump in your body. Never, ever will they jump in your body or do anything freaky. But this is your own path. So taking that leap of faith from the black square of ignorance, wanting to be in the white square, which is projection, right? The sun, a masculine action. You're saying, I want to know. I want to learn. And then through synchronicity, you will be introduced to to the Great White Lodge, the University of Ascended Masters in the Sky. And you might even be one of them. I don't know about all that. Uh, but I'm just saying, you might be right, but I don't, I don't know. But you know what's funny about the Great White Lodge? A lot of people talk about that. And it's in every, it's the one thing that I've found in every mystery school, whether it's uh, Christian mysticism, uh, Egyptian, uh, Hindu, the uh, Sufis, Theosophy, even Freemasonry. Uh, it's came up, that great white lodges came up in all of the mystery schools. Yes. When I first heard about this, I was 30 years old. I was undergoing an ego death, ego collapse. Very uh, psychic time for me when I was in a high state of consciousness and couldn't really tell reality from not reality, I was not on drugs, but it appeared as if I was. And at this, one of my visions during this time, I saw a white dove going across the blue sky with like a, fi a, a little fig in its mouth. I want to say fig for some reason, but it was sprig in its mouth. And I heard the word Illuminati. And then I saw the big eye, which is providence that we have on the money, but that's providence, the eye of providence. I thought that was the evil eye. 
it's the eye of providence. I don't know who called it the evil eye. That's more of a, that's a different culture. And that's to keep, um, when you have the evil eye, it keeps curses off of you. So that's some darker stuff there. Okay. Sorry. I get them confused. That's okay. Of course. That's what we're here for. But the eye of providence, you can even look it up on Wikipedia. And it's basically the overseeing eye of the college, if you will. It is the, I don't want to call it a person or make it into a person because it is not. It's a consciousness. It's, it does not embody itself at all. But it is like a smile from God or a cosmic wink. It is the synchronicity that happens in your life. Or when you hear the birds and you actually hear them speaking English to you, when you have these auditory emotional experiences, I feel like it is a product of providence, which is like a miracle. Snarkett says she doesn't know why, but she sees you as an evil enchantress, not a priestess. What's up with that? Uh, I've gotten that a lot during my <laughs> life, actually. <laughs> when I was five years old, the neighborhood kids tied me to a tree and tried to burn me as a witch. What? Yeah. And I had sleep paralysis with the boogeyman, the shadow, since till I was 19 years old. So I had that pressure. And then I had social pressure of people who used to burn me as a witch coming back to try to burn me again. <laughs> like, no, wait a minute. So someone, they really tried to burn you like old style, witch they burning. They were like, we were five. There's no way they knew that. And no way I, you know, I was not prepared for that either. <laughs> but that's the epic life stories that we have. You know, they're like mythology. They're amazing. We're not normal people. You know, I, I got to respect some of this stuff you're saying. This is, uh, you know, uh, th here's another thing that I want to talk about before we go into the break is this paranormal truth seeking field. There's this fad thing to it, you know, Yeah, big time. And it's such a distraction. I feel like it is. And there's a lot of hypocrisy going on. And I addressed a lot of that in my latest video, Illuminati. You? Yeah, it's called Illuminati over Illuminati. I like the naughty, naughty. Uh, uh, uh. Um, I address that because you understand they are false prophets, my friend. We've been warned about this for centuries. Well, uh, sometimes they're hard to tell apart, though. You know, that's but, where the heart comes in. You have to listen with your heart. That's the most important thing. But when your mind is running around with its underwear in its hand, with a lampshade on its head, then you can't hear your heart. I feel like that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I do. But there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of that going on. And I see a lot of people, you know, masses of people following this stuff like a you know when you watch benny hen and there's thousands of people in the stadium and you're thinking how can this many people be duped and and I no one thinking, is tricked no one's tricked joe everyone knows the decision they're making i promise you they know the, the difference between good and bad and someone could listen to joel olstein with one t type of ears and say, oh, my God, he just wants your money. And then someone could listen with a different type of ears and say, wow, that was inspiring. I won't send him money. But it's like, what perspective are you hearing these people from? Is it yeah. your egoic filter? Are you saying this person wears this kind of clothes? Therefore, I'm judging that they are that kind of person because that's physical. That's material. You, it's all about the soul now. And it's going to be a, a little while before everybody gets on the same page with that. Man, I you know, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. I I, I worry about that because I have a kid. You know, one day I'm not going to be here, and I hope that he makes the right choice. There's a lot of bad stuff in this world. That's why you raise him to know the difference between good and evil, because yeah. it's such a huge difference. Yeah, but you my dad raised me it. that way, and I still done some pretty bad stuff. I'm surprised I'm alive right now. Well, you understand that we are raising in consciousness as the earth is raising in vibration, that what happened to you as a kid is no longer available for your child. <laughs> I guess, yeah. 
Yeah. And understand all these little kids that came in, they're volunteers just like us. They're just as tough as us, if not better. Well, I think you're right. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I would take credit for my son learning how to walk and ride his bike and all this other stuff, but I really think he did it himself. That's bad, isn't it? It could be memory, past life memory. And in fact, I do believe all past lives are happening at the same moment right now. When you get beyond the logical mind, you get beyond linear thinking. And that's when you enter the twilight zone of the fourth dimension. That's when things can start to get fun. But at the same time, you're probably getting attacked by ancestors or spooky things to do with your family and your DNA, which is something that people like me and Eve Lorgan deal with constantly. Hey, ACOG just jumps in the room. He said, Riders of the Void. I wonder if I should use that. Do you like that? It's pretty cool. Riders of but, the Void? You know, we're lighting up the, the dark spaces. So it's taking, it's actually sex if you want to be Howard I'm Stern about it. I like sex. We're taking the void is the Mahamudra, the vagina, if you will, the yoni, the dark space. And the light is the penis that pierces that void and makes a third and even better thing, right? That's what Jordan Maxwell's been trying to tell everybody that all the mystery schools was about, like that principle, you know? Definitely. Yeah, that's straight from Hermetics. We got to take a break. Hey, I want to tell you guys about this uh, hypnagogic thing that happened to me. I know you wanted to talk about that, didn't you? Ooh, yeah. Another spooky thing that happened, right? <laughs> Oh, good googly moogly. We're back. Uh, we're here with Corn Wilson, the occult priestess, and we are talking about some heavy subjects. You know, uh, I think you were relating some uh, part to the body to some fundamentals of hermetics, and some people kind of blushed in the chat room. Look, if you can't handle an adult show, there's a children's channel on the other side. I think you can go uh, plenty of that around. But uh, Many people will listen to Howard Stern and people like him for hours on end and not think a thing. But when someone like me says those words, it hits them a little strange. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, very educated about the beautiful phallus and beautiful yoni of our nature. Hi, Rose. I see you in there. Um, well, I had a uh, another experience the other night at the computer and I was actually sitting at the desk and I tweeted about it. And I fell asleep into this chair a few times, which I think, by the way, is why I had to go to the doctor. But um, I got the body vibrations and stuff, and uh, I'm still in the chair. And I got confused about what was real and what wasn't. And I started kind of wigging out, like my heart sped up, trying to figure out what reality was. I don't know if you've ever, like, landed in a pool and got upside down like that, and you didn't know which way was up. That's how I felt. So disorienting. You didn't know what state of consciousness you were in. No. And that's what happened to me as a kid all the time with sleep paralysis. Only I guess I got used to it after a while. Not that it didn't scare me every time. It's scary. And you didn't even have an entity there that evening. You know, you were just stuck between the modes because you're working very hard. That's stress, my friend. That's but the boogeyman of stress. Did I pop out of my body or something? You definitely did. And in fact, I think what happened was you were getting a class upstairs. You were getting a download and it was interrupted. Damn. I had GG's here. GG and Cortana are both here. Mm hmm. Wow. <laughs> Dennis is here, too. Hey, you know, awesome. a lot of people are lurking. Like I said, I got an email from a guy that's been listening he never. They, there's lots of people that don't come into the chat rooms. They don't comment on YouTube. They don't do anything, but they listen. You know. Well, apparently, I just have a good point to make. Yeah. Remember, you were in, you were in a blurry state of consciousness. You were in between states of consciousness. Remember before when I said we fell to the flesh. That also means that we get in our soul car or Merkaba or Kaaba. We get in our light orb, our consciousness. And we travel upward. The first level we hit, I've said this before, I'll say it again, fourth dimension, the bardo to the Buddhists, the place of ghosts and ancestors and really depressed people or murderous people, people who, because their vibrational level is so low, cannot reach heaven. So understand they're weighted down with their own poo, right? Mm, been there before. 
Right. And we have to pass through that garbage dump to get to the school and to get to heaven and to get beyond to the more universal realms of the soul. Like star seeds, people who say, oh, I'm from Sirius or I'm from Orion. These are people who can surpass that level. You go through it. Everybody does. But then you surpass it and you come out usually to an origin port- point, an origin point, like what most people call home. Yeah. My closest origin point is Sirius B. That's how I got here. I want to find my origin point. I know you do, but that's how the subconscious in your own mind and the bardo or the ghost fourth dimensional realm are reflections of the same sick part of humanity, this lower part, the part that chose evil and continues to choose evil. This part is right now being resonated through with light. And eventually I have a video on this. It explains what Hermes told me. The dimensions are merging. So some of you people were in Atlantis and you did see the destruction and it, it scarred you. This is the opposite of Atlantis. This is when the dimensions don't get torn apart and then ghosts come in and it's terrible. This is when heaven comes to earth. But it's a process of stepping down vibration and lightening up this vibration. So again, to study hermetics, not everyone who reads hermetics is going to get this. Yeah. So that's why I point people towards my work because it's modern and it's easy to understand. What do you say to people that say, okay, so you're getting all these downloads and information, but it's, I mean, or are you just supposed to take your word for it? Yeah, what do you say to skeptics? Because I honestly don't deal with them much. Because if they have not had the grace to to have their own experience, then maybe they shouldn't be listening to mine either. Ooh. Everyone has their own karma. Back at Everyone. you. For right. real. Like... <laughs> Maybe they're not ready for this, and they would burn me rather than hear me. What about the, okay, I want to ask you this, because I asked Eric the other night, and and I think I've asked Dan Lopez this too, the knocks, the, uh, when I'm laying in bed, I hear the knocks. I know exactly what you're talking about. Or the door slamming or something, you know? Carl. Carl Jung talked about that quite a bit for a psychologist, actually. (laughs) Carl Jung and uh, Edgar Cayce both did large works about the Knox. And then we can go to the Fox sisters of New York, who were famous for interpreting the Knox. And then they were famous for being exposed, where they were using their uh, knuckles of their feet to make the Knox. So we have a whole history of Knox going on. Things that go bump in the night. We have to bring up Art Bell. Things that go bump in the night. Uh, This is the first time I've been on the air since Art went home. And I just want to take a shout out to my hero. And I know that he's still there helping us get all of our podcasts together. (laughs) (laughs) The knocks freak me out a little bit more than, than the door slamming, though. But I want this is. I swear to goodness, just to put it in a playful way, let's say God is playing with you, not messing with you, not dementing you. That's your filter. Why don't you get curious like a child and say, hmm, this is interesting instead of, oh, my God, this is freaking me out. That's what I do. I (laughs) jump out of bed. No, seriously, this is what I do. Okay, I'm in bed. I'm sound. I could be just dreaming whatever I'm doing. It doesn't matter. And then I'll hear the door slam or the knock, you know, or, or, or. or a wham, and I'll jump out of bed and run straight to the door just to see. I'm interested. I want to know. Every time, nothing's there. Nothing. Now, I feel got, like there's beings going in and out of it. my house, you know? I'm sure you're in a portal because of who and what you are, no doubt about it. But I want because your consciousness go, does go beyond the death realm, and anyone's consciousness who does that is targeted. But at the same time, I believe that the good has rulership, basically. If you, in yourself, in your heart, start playing with it and saying, okay, I trust God and I trust God isn't going to eat me. So ask the knock to knock again. You know, get childlike with it. Get playful with it. Tommy knockers. Well, it ain't Bigfoot. I know that, you know. So 
I don't know what your, it is. Your ego can eat you. If you are afraid of Freddy Krueger or the shadow, it's going to eat you. And that's why you have to be like a child to enter heaven because you have to laugh at the spooky stuff. But won't then I'll, that make me kind of feel crazy, you know, like laughing. At what's spooky. wrong with that? What's wrong with that? You tell me what's wrong with that. I feel like you're like sucking me into being evil and crazy kind of. That's I, creepy. I, That's I, creeping me out. Where know, did that come from, Joe? I don't, I don't know because I heard you say laugh at the spooky stuff. So I thought about when you said that, I thought about the scariest thing I've ever been through and then me just laughing like a hyena. And it kind of felt evil. Because it was a rub. It was a fiction friction. You know, it wasn't real. It's not a threat in the room right now. So your body consciousness said, this isn't a threat, but at the same time, it scares me. So it created a, a tulpa, a thought form that just spooked you out, that you blamed and projected. I blamed you. Me. Yeah. Yeah. So is everybody else. It's all good. I, I don't, don't care. It's just me. <laughs> right? That's what it is. Hey, uh, no, it's your ego. It's not you, Joe, as a soul. That's not you at all. I would never think that you would think that of me. The, you wouldn't think that of me. The question comes up in the chat. Are the knocks in sequence of threes? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. What's that about? Well, to me, threes are always about Hermes, Trismic, Restus, the thrice great, 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 great. Three, three times three. three. So would it be? It's, the, it's more of like a playful fairy realm thing. If you can have that perspective, if you keep the perspective that it's evil, then it will eat you. It's the guardian at the gate. The guardian will it's like going to the closet and opening it up and saying, I'm not afraid and having the faith. It's proving your faith to yourself. And a lot of people aren't willing to prove the faith to themselves because there is a level in which you go crazy for a minute, some mm. people for longer. And if you're not willing to go crazy, you'll never be truly sane. They're saying three is not good. It's bad. I thought Where three was actually a culture? good number, though. What culture? Because three is the empress, and I think Cortana would have a lot to say about that. But what yeah. culture? They have. That's the thing. A number itself is not good or bad. It's not black or white. And that's how you get your discernment. Go back to the chessboard and say, is this black or is this white? You got to question all of this stuff instead of, ooh, I heard a superstition and it felt real to me because. In a past life that I'm actually living right now, we believe that superstition as a community, as a village. I'm trying I mean, to think of all the threes. Like they've always been good things in my life. All right, now, except when somebody dies, oh, yeah. like people do die in threes or something. That's weird. You could pick on seven if you like. You could I get pick what on you're saying. 13. And maybe it's what because we're focused it's material. on. Material. It's material. Again, it has nothing to do with black or white or the soul. It, it, where you're going to get confused, where your logic brain is going to start chasing its tail infinitum, which is very dangerous for hermits, for healers, for light workers. We can get in these uh, thought loops of logic mind and it locks us down and we can't create and we can't think and we get depressed. So it's very important that you do not kill yourself with the logic mind and say, you know, everything must be physical. It must be real. It must be tangible. Because if you're psychic, you're cutting off your arm, at least, if not half your body. Yeah, and I think it's a perception. Because when I was younger, I used to get stoned and eat Captain Crunch. And every time it would make noise in my mouth, I thought the cops were at the door. See, that's all in my head. Yeah, I, it, fear, paranoia is a real thing that you cultivated and developed as a child to keep you alive. Hmm. But it's part of the ego, and it does, like rocket boosters, it should come off and die when you become a true individual, a sovereign individual. And that means that really the complicated part of it that people don't talk about a lot is you say, I am no longer a, a part of my bloodline. I deny my ancestors. I am a sovereign child of love. You don't even have to use the word God. You can use the word love. The the those or the one that created me and nothing else has dominion over me only love and that's basically claiming your sovereignty and becoming your own royalty and saying i'm a mature adult and i know what's best for me because i listen to my higher guidance and i don't need to listen to a president or my teacher 
these types of things, you see, because you have the wisdom all the time. I don't feel very wise, though. That's because you are stuck in logic mind still. You still have the monkey mind running you around saying, look at that, look at that, look at that. And that's the mental loop that a lot of us get into. And like I said, it can be dangerous if you're in a very high state of consciousness that's very negative at this in fear in a high state of consciousness, you will feel crazy because I think that's actually what crazy is. It's the ego in high states of consciousness and it can't handle it because it knows it's going to die. I'm getting scared again. That's so weird for me. I, I don't understand that. I used to get panic attacks about that, thinking about death. You know, like I'm I got not this afraid stuff of that. In, inside me, like all these different organs and if nine different systems of lymph nodes and cells and whatever else is going on in there. What if something doesn't work, you know, and then it stops and then I'm done. I'm done. I, it, it it won't work like a car. It happens to cars all the time. There See, you I'm, go. Starting Lack to get of a, faith. I'm starting to get a little panicky now thinking about it. Lack of faith. Joe, does God love you? I think so. Well, start thinking about that a little bit more, please, because that will heal this. It's lack of faith. And I will tell you the body consciousness and the mind mental logic consciousness are two different things. The body is not a philosopher. Like my hands are sweating right now because I'm nervous. My body is. Why are you nervous? But because I'm working. I'm, I'm, I'm between the realms speaking through two different, you know, filters, basically. I'm taking the higher stuff that they'd like me to say and filtering it down in little words that are understandable. But this is a state of, you know, higher state of being on, on. I'm on, okay? I think I'm screwing you up now. I'm sorry. That's okay. What I'm saying is my body is physio physiologically reacting, but my mind is not. I'm totally calm. So I know I'm not in threat situation, but my body is sweating as if it is. So what's the biggest thing we need to watch out for right now? In this field, I think. I think uh, that's what I always go to you, for you about. Field. Huh? Well, tell me. And well, like the in the truth movement, you know, what's the biggest thing that we all need to be aware of right now? Well, who's teaching about how to get into yourself? Who's teaching about codependency, about alcoholism? Who's teaching about healing the self and talking to the self and knowing the self? Because what I, nobody's really even talking about God. It seems to me there's a lot of alien and supernatural talk going on, but very little of it has to do with anything practical or the soul or soul growth. You think it's because aliens are cool? Of course I do, but it's the time. I believe this is that I believe God is a big playwright and we all live out the plays. And at this time in pop culture around the earth, it's all about alien consciousness because there are a lot of people here that were not originally born on this planet. And we started in the 70s welcoming them through music, through movies. I'm one of them. We were welcomed back. Come on back, you starseed kids. And David Bowie wrote about us. There's so much art about us. It's crazy. And I imagine most of my friends are who I David call Bowie. us. Yeah. But it's all about... That alien thing is because we're about to find out we don't just have Earth parents. We don't. Our soul, our soul is multidimensional, and that's that's what again most people aren't talking about. But the starseed people, the light workers, the way showers are talking about being a multidimensional consciousness, and that's what I was also speaking about when I said you go through the Bardo realm of the ghosts, and then you go up to the higher realm of fifth dimensional heaven, and then on from there. Somebody who is aware of those levels and can go there at will, it's not exactly the same as astral projection because that usually means you're asleep. This you can do while you're awake. I can go to the college, get a scroll, come back. This isn't weird for me or my friends. This is actually very normal. Uh, I befriended my astrologer friend two years ago, and as a tarot reader, I traded with her for astrology, and we found out that I was basically reading the stars through the tarot, and she was reading the tarot through the stars. Wow. I mean, it's amazing, and that's why I'm convinced and know in my heart it's a real school, real teachers, and we're here to do the great work. 
Well, I, I'm, I'm, you know, convinced that you believe it. And that, that really strikes me because I've got so much doubt about everything. You know, I have faith and faith is cultivated. And I've been through some really horrible things to have this kind of faith. You know, I was locked up almost for an entire year. So it was 14 years altogether that they put me in psych wards. But if you take all that time and you distill it, I was trapped for a year well, you know of that my life. <laughs> it's horrifying. That's terrible. That is terrible. It, it is. It's horrifying. So I'm telling you, I'm a warrior and I'm here to speak the truth as I'm experiencing it, not as I'm reading it or guessing about it. Because before I went crazy sane, I was a high priestess for many years. I owned two occult stores. I did all the things that a normal materialist person is supposed to do in this world when they have a passion, when they care about something. But then everything changed when I got let into the higher cosmos and understood the deeper teachings because they were happening to me. And now I have to speak about it. And so that's the mission I'm on. Because you guys are coming. This is the next wave. It's, it's, if I thought this was only going to happen to me, I'd shut up. I'd go on a mountain somewhere. But believe me, I think it's going to happen to just about everyone. Well, that's a good thing. That is a good thing, right? Because I don't just I worry about so. myself. I'm, here for, I'm worried no, about a lot of people, to be honest with you. The awakening of humanity. The whole reason I keep coming back here incarnating and this sucks believe me where i'm from <laughs> was beyond duality and it doesn't suck well, it's very it, hard to be here tell me about this place you're from which one well, I the mean, best one the best one we label andromeda and half of andromeda is in this system of duality but the other half is in what the buddhists call the pure realms beyond duality so you can say it's the most perfected parts of God in many different flavors, more flavors than you can imagine. So my original soul home in this metaphoric language that we speak of on earth, I'm from Andromeda. Am I, am I from Andromeda too? I don't know. We'll have to do a session, Joe. <laughs> How the hell? Do, so I go to you and then I do what? Like, is it like hypnotizing stuff? Because you are talented. You are a seer. I can guide you to where you will tell me what's happening. I will call in your star family to come pick you up, and you will tell me who they are. Trippy. I love it. It's one of my favorite things ever because when you get to your star family, you're no longer under the hold of your earth family. And look at it. Earth family, alcoholism, abuse, molestation, I mean, satanic ritual abuse, go for it. Like, whatever. Whatever. Earth family, not really that great. Star family is a completely different show, and they actually love you. I actually feel it in my heart, and I get like good vibes all the time, every day. But I used to hug my teddy bear when I was a kid, and I got good vibes. I wonder if that's psychological. Partially, because the body is different consciousness than the than the brain, right? So, like. I can hug a doll and it will put pressure points on my body where I'm normally hugged at. So it will bring me the memory of hug. So yes, part of that is your body. But when you get chills and you're like on flames, on fire, electricity, crack, 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 that's your soul. That's spirit. Okay. That's cool. I'm, I'm with that. Some of the stuff is a little freaky to me, but I think, you know, when we talk about face and fears, it's not just about crossing four lanes of traffic. Some of the stuff is real scary at first until maybe you just get past it and then you realize it's not that big a deal. Well, no, you're going to have a sword at your heart at one point or another because you have to face the boogie beast, the monster. Everyone knows that hero's journey 101. There's going to be a monster you have to face more than likely. It's one of your parents, (laughs) right? Exactly family of origin and when you find out you have star parents you can forgive more your earthly parents who really messed you up kind of but it is all about forgiveness but at the first very start of it you it's okay to get angry it's okay to express yourself it's okay to act out but understand that you just started on the path to getting wholly better holistically better and not only that when you're dealing with a star seed they get to 
heal their entire family bloodline Hmm. as well. That's a big deal. And I think Laura Eisenhower talks about that a lot. I think this is some pretty heady stuff. I'm with you, though. It's time. I think we can all agree that most of what is in the media is bubblegum. It's fodder. It's really not serious anymore. It's just a bunch of crazy people. So going within, it's almost as if we're being pushed in that direction. Ooh, you know what? Let's take uh, this last break, and I do want to talk about that. Who are we, who are we supposed to listen to? You know, like who are we supposed to be following here? And then uh, I would you're like you're sovereign. To, you're not following anyone. But I want you're I know, sovereign. but you know what I mean. And uh, we've had a discussion about this. I want I want you to talk about this when we come back. Though I got a question, and you uh, you're still there, aren't you? Did you disappear? I'm Corey? right here, Joe. Okay. Um, if you told me this, Darren Bray, if 90% of what we say is from our ego, then how the hell am I supposed to do a talk show without my ego? No one said you were supposed to do a talk show without your ego because you would totally lose track of all of your audience. No one would follow you. <laughs> I'm so confused. So, so the like- thing is, is we go from ego, protection mode, jerk mode, basically selfish, self-serving jerk. <laughs> that, that's the worst to a character so once you're doing like what is it the moral of truth the sword of truth and the shield of virtue once you are using your hero tools to make decisions in your life then you're going to go from ego death which is oh my god i'm not i'm not who i thought i was i'm not who they wanted me to be in all of these esoteric questions that I like my ego, though. It scores touchdowns and eats steak. No, the thing is, is that the ego turns into, transforms into a character. So then you become an archetypal person. You become an avatar. And that's a whole new level. It's in a whole other Oprah show, too. I hate Oprah. (laughs) Yeah, that's an old one. (laughs) We don't have a show like that to say it's a whole other whatever show. Wendy O. Williams, I don't think so. Everybody in the chat room is getting a $2,000 gift. Yeah, and we can all jump up and clap and stuff. You get a car. You get a car. Years. I had visions of Oprah as a snake eating an apple. So that just can't be good. There's a lot of people out there telling us that we're spiritual. Matter of fact, you know, another thing that's been bothering me is I've seen articles where people are telling me how to be spiritual because I'm you're pretending to be spiritual doesn't mean that you're spiritual. I'm like, who the hell are you? You know, it sounds like the pot calling the kettle black. It sounds like someone accusing the world of what they're actually doing. Mm. Do we do that a lot? Do we project our own stuff on everybody? It depends on how mature or immature you are or how traumatized and broken you still are versus how far you are in the path of healing. So it's what level of consciousness is that person, is their heart, really? Where's their heart at? Because you can be an intellectual marvel and have absolutely no soul. Do you think there's people on this planet right now that don't have a soul? Well, like the crow said, they're all dead. They don't know they're dead, but they're all dead. And people like me. You sound happy when you say that. (sighs) <sighs> because it's a relief that we won't have to go through this much longer. <laughs> it's scary. But I've lived in the ghost realm or the hell realm my entire life because I've always seen. I've always been psychic. I've always had the vision. I've always known if someone is coming from a dark place or a, you know, a good place. But I also wrestled with my ego all the time saying, no, that person has to be good. They're really pretty. They wear the right clothes. They must be a good person. So this is what people are now getting into. They're heroes, they're idols, the, all, the negative Illuminati. They're all mm. being exposed one after another. And women are shaving their head. You girls got to stop that. I don't like that. I think that's more of a Stepford wife thing, but it did start with Buddhism as we shave our head to renounce vanity and to renounce the physical world. I'm sorry. I thought it was like a fashion thing. It's actually now an Illuminati thing. You see what happened to Britney Spears when she cut off all her hair. She was breaking her MK Ultra mind control. No, no, no. I mean like the girls that shave like half their head and then they flip the other side over. It really freaks me out. It don't look real. It looks weird. That's 
what you're talking about is the masculinization of the, or militarization of the female is what oh, they're doing. Oh, no. We got women yeah. armies now? The woman is going to be risen up above the man in this New World Order type of scenario. It's just pop culture. You really don't have to worry about it. Nobody's buying into this, really. <laughs> Only celebrities are buying into this. So it'll we fade, are not. Right? Will it fade away? Well, it's called social engineering, and you might have to ask the Nazis if it's going to fade away soon, but I can say the whole world is changing. We are in the times we have been waiting for, and we are those we have been waiting for. And if you read my blog, you will find the little steps along the way that makes me so confident to say these things, because I've been listening to Hermes Trismegistus for over 15 years. And so to have a master teacher at your ear, in your heart, it is, it's mind-blowing, and I know that some of you are going to start experiencing that this year. You know, the the thing about hair and what the, how we express ourselves in a spiritual way, I wonder sometimes, you know, because there's a lot of this gender thing going on, and I, and I saw it starting when my son was trying to wear skinny jeans and stuff, and I'm like, dude... You, girls like that you look like a girl like i didn't understand it all kind of blending together and it freaked me out you know because i just wear jeans you know and they, they look like jeans and I, my hair's short because i'm a boy and I'm, I'm a boy you know and that's what i'm used to but there's all this gender stuff happening now and then dudes wear you know clothes that look like girls and girls are shaving their head and they look like they're in the army and and i'm thinking well, what the hell is going on here? And I'm wondering if it, because I don't want to get too wild here, but I've heard that like the highest level of consciousness is both genders kind of coming together, you know? Okay. The- right. Which is, at the end of alchemy, we, we get that. And we also get that with Hermes, Aphrodite, Hermaphrodite. And just like the Baphomet, it is an amalgamation of symbols. It is not a physical representation of what is physically going to happen to people. (laughs) This is very (sighs) old Hindu teaching actually, but yes, hermetics as well brought it into the Western system of the left side of the brain is masculine. The right side of the brain is feminine. Uh And when those two marry, when those two get into agreement, like, hey, imagination, you're hot and sexy. Ooh, I like that Mr. Math guy with your lines and your triangles. When those two get hot and sexy, logic goes out the window. But and we that's just went from PG-13 to R right now, you know. But, I'm not keeping track. <laughs> this is how it works. No, this but is, <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. I, and there's I'm, a marriage also that takes place in the heart. As well, two different sides of the person, masculine and feminine. So in in Revelations, when they talk about the bridegroom, you know, that that always um, always perplexed me, like the bridegroom. What the hell is that bridegroom? And, you know, you go into a church when you're a kid, like a Baptist church, and they'll just say it. You know, the bride married supper of the lamb. Praise the Lord. But they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Jesus is going to marry the church. And why did they have women with oil lamps, if that was the church. It doesn't make any sense. As a metaphor, it was a test of faith for women. That's what that whole story is about, because Hermes told me that story. He does tell me Bible stories to get an allegory across to me. And he said, your lamp is full. It will always be full. And that's just, you know, one level. Um, Understand that the religious teachings of Christ, 2,000 years, the Piscean Age, is an age of dominance and submission. And we are leaving that age for the Aquarian age, which is kind of high tech, but it's also very spiritual. So it's the merging of those worlds. We're no longer going to be under the Saturn hierophant restriction of domination. That's what's dying. That's the dragon you see being pierced by the sunlight. Do you think Jesus was, um, I think Jesus was an uh, an adept in the mystery schools. I really do. Most people will tell you that he studied in the East. But the thing is, is it doesn't matter where his body physically was. When you're in the illuminated college, you all get the same syllabus. We all get the same lessons. We get different missions. Jesus had to be a martyr. That was his mission, to die. What a horrible mission, but it was a horrible time. And we're coming out of that and our missions are going to get more fun and we're going to 
you know, do neat and interesting things in the future. But I'm telling you, there's going to be fairy realm involved. It's going to be a whole new thing. It's, it's not just space travel, physical. That's the rub. That's the thing that I think people aren't understanding. The rub? Our, our, yeah, the rub of friction. Our physical reality is changing. Uh-huh. Meaning you're going to see more like a psychic, even if you're not used to being psychic. You, everyone's waking up. And that's why I'm here trying to say good and bad. Because when you wake up, you are challenged. Are you good or are you bad? And you kind of have to prove it. And you can go crazy in the process of proving that to yourself. But if you start in self-love right now, if you start looking at your own issues and what was so messed up in your childhood and start saying, wow, that wasn't my fault and getting into self-help with that kind of psychology and self-love or even talking to people like me, there's plenty of us out there, we can help you get to that next level where we teach you how to fish. We don't give you a fish. So My we're friend not told me paradigm. to stop letting people manipulate me and walk on me and stand up to them. So I tried to do that today, but it still just didn't feel right. You know, fake it, fake it till you make it. Love yourself enough to stand up for yourself. And that's the thing. We can't be wimps anymore. We really have to stand in our power of love. Power of love. That's the only power that matters. So what are the kind of, so what are these, what do you do for people like one-on-one type things? I mean, I know you have your own business. Like I've had some few people on here that I, I tell you that I keep close to me. Like Amelia, you know, Karis is one of them. I've found a new friend and Marla freeze, which is, I believe is a gifted psychic and you, I love Marla freeze. She's really cool. I just finished her book, American psychic. You guys I should get that. It's good. Oh, I it's got so it too. good. She does talk about her, her abuse. And I was like, I had to tell her right away. As soon as I read that part, I was like, oh my gosh, Marla, thank God for you telling about your abuse because people are still shamed and you bringing it out. And believe me, it was not easy to read it. Even it was pretty intense and that she's being that open with everybody as a psychic is, is just a sign of, of beautiful things to come. It's like the Me Too campaign, only she's a psychic doing it, and it's, it's just amazing, and thank God for that. Well, what do you do? What can you help people with? If someone came to you and said, you know, you know they wanted you to counsel them, do you do like one-on-one sessions and stuff? Yeah, definitely. And I usually hang on with somebody for about two hours each time because that's how long it takes to get all the information through. So I am an open channel. Uh, Sometimes dead people will come through, but I usually ignore them because they're lower consciousness usually. Okay. But sometimes they are an angel. They've hit that realm and they come through and they need to talk. And so I I allow that. But otherwise, it's just the masters speaking straight with you and giving you things that just like tell them about your grandma with the oatmeal. No way. Like just as an example. Do I got to tell them about grandma's story? I will. Yeah. So I I, I was talking to Corin on the phone earlier today and And she got this, because I had been to the doctor about some health issues. I'm not going to go into it because I don't really, whatever. But she's like, you know what I think? I'm really getting this feeling like you need oatmeal. And it was so weird because my grandmother had just come over with a bag full of this overnight oatmeal stuff. You know, and you didn't know that. And she was like, of course I didn't. She's like, here, son, you know, th- this is, I love my grandmother, by the way. But she's, you just put a little milk and you put them in the refrigerator and they're called overnight oatmeals they are wonderful here here's a whole bag full of them and i was thinking okay and they got all the different fruits and stuff and and um i guess i got all that for a reason right is that what you're yeah, saying i love i love your imitation of your grandma it's awesome so that's, that's your feminine sounds, side really, I yeah think. that's your mommy side isn't that sweet mm, yeah that's a part of you because she loved you i mean that's important think about that that's a part of your feminine side because she's influenced you with love she wants you to love yourself. I'm just, I know it's kind of cheesy, but I'm totally saying it. <laughs> she used and to then, yeah, she does. But that's what I do all the time. My clients are constantly like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, like that. And that I bring up the things that just happened to them or the things that they know they need to do. But I give them a plan and 
they, sometimes we have to set time intervals and schedule things out for them. And it's totally cool with me too because I'm a teacher and that's what this whole thing is, is school. Your whole entire life is school. And so getting somebody like a high priestess in your life is like getting a schoolmaster who can teach you to speak with the higher masters and if you like God, if you like, I don't talk to God much because God is very, very, very big. And I don't really feel like it's what I need to do. You know, my heart is good. My heart is happy. So I just receive the loving information and vibrations from the masters. You know and then what? I pass that on. A.K. Cog said, um, has anybody heard from Art Bell? So we know Art Bell passed recently. Mm -hmm. And I have not had a proper audience with Art, but I have felt him very much so. And I know that he's got a campaign, what we call a campaign, afterlife movement, where he is going to be helping all the radio, what happened? All the radio and podcasting people. Um, I hit my mic. Oh. Because I'm excited. I'm excited about our bell. Oh what, what do you mean so, by he's gonna he's gonna be helping everybody? What does that mean? So I believe he's gonna be hanging out in studios around the world saying, Hey, you should get that guest and we should do this and you know, just like dropping seeds and truth bombs. And if people can hear it, which they will, it'll start turning up the volume. And maybe they don't know it's Art Bell. Maybe they just think it's, oh, they heard it in their head. Whatever. It doesn't matter. His influence is going to be awesome and great. And I do believe a lot of psychics come this October will be like, oh my gosh, we've heard from Art Bell. So there should be like a whole month of Art Bell shows <laughs> in October. I got an email from him. Actually, Tessa did, who does the booking for this show. We got an email from him, like, I think it was a day or two before he died. We actually asked him to come on the show. And he um, he emailed us back and said, you know, hey, and he was really nice. He was like, thank you so much for thinking of me. I really appreciate it, but I'm retired and I don't really do interviews for anybody anymore. And we was like, that's cool. You know, if you don't ask, you never know. And then I think it was a day or two later we found out he passed away. Yeah, it was wild. But thank goodness, you know, in a way, it brought an art well, art bell wave back into our little tiny corner of pop culture. And people now are starting to watch the old art bell shows on YouTube. And it's like a renaissance. And art bell was the beginning of this whole UFO metaphysical media. He he raised me. You know, he made me the monster I am today. <laughs> I think he made. I think he made a lot of us. You know, there's people using these ghost box, uh, and they're they're saying they're talking to art. And now I listened to some of them online, and it really kind of did sound like art. I've had my own ghost box experience, but what do you think about that? Do you think that there's some validity to that? I believe physic, like metaphysically or whatever. I believe it's possible. I wasn't there, so I can't say. But yes, I do believe that radio waves are magic. I really do. And as the vibrations shift, we're going to find that radio waves can turn people on. Cortana says, I listen to the classic Art Bell shows to go to sleep. Damn right on that one. I've been doing that for years. I still do that. What is it about that dude's voice that put that everybody loves? He's got that voice, like that... Uh, like I always said, like that great uncle, that great wise uncle that really could understand you, you know. And what if in a past life he was some big ass teacher, you know, and we mm -hmm. were all at his feet listening to him, and then he came back with the same voice, and we're like, oh, we know that guy. Well, you know, here here comes a phone call. Sammy. Sammy, how are you? All right, how are you? I'm well, good. I heard you earlier. And I wanted to let you know your fear of death so much greater than the death. It's actually going to be. Um, everybody's experience is different. And I know people who haven't been there probably have a hard time understanding that because we only know what we can remember in this lifetime, mostly. But you're wasting precious moments in your life allowing that fear because eventually it's going to happen we all have to do that you know we're not anybody nobody gets out of here without doing that but the thing is the moment you leave your body the whole wide world changes for you you're not this anymore and life goes on in a different way but i just hear you and i i want you to know i mean i've been there more than once 
and um, everybody's experience will be different because of wherever you came from before this life and where you're going after. You but came out, you died is, or something? Or are you talking about your past life? Twice. Or? Tell us your story. Okay. I'm so curious. You're well, so beautiful. I love one, what you're saying. Can you do it in like two minutes? I want to yeah. hear it, though. Well, age four, I died. Uh, and uh, age six, I died. At age six, I don't know what from. I just remember seeing the doctors working on me. And both times, the moment I left my body, it is the most immense, enormous love that you can never felt here on this earth. It's oh, just a cool. freeing love that you just, you can't even imagine. I couldn't put it into words. Um, one of my experiences, I heard what sounded like a million angels feel, singing. That singing, healed my yes. soul. Yes. Yeah, I had healed my soul because I had been through, I'd been beaten and raped. I was four. Oh, my God. And so, yes, listen to this like, woman. But I'm just saying, a lot of people, when I hear them, and I'm not real close with them, and I can't really talk to them, it breaks my heart to know that they've, they have wasted even one second of their life thinking about the fear they have about death. Because it's something we all have to do eventually. Thank you so, so don't, much. Don't for... waste the, the fear. <laughs> well, thank you for Trade calling it and sharing for joy. That. Yes, I will. Have a good I, night. I promise you I'll take your advice. Thank you for calling, Sammy. Thank you, Sammy. You're welcome. Bye-bye. How cool was that? Right? Beautiful. That was really beautiful. I wish we had more time with her. We got to get out of here, though. But, yeah, we need to give your links out, though, before we get out of here. Occultpriestess.com. And you can Google Occult Priestess. I'm the only one that shows up. You'll find my blog on WordPress. Very important. My secrets are in the blog. And then I do have video presentations that I believe are very entertaining and fun, like I make you laugh, on YouTube under Occult Priestess. Please subscribe. I have uh, almost got 10,000 views Ooh. on my video entitled Illuminati Spiritual Knowledge, my take on the white college and the dichotomy of black and white of the chessboard. And there's a lot of information there, too. Only it's more entertaining than the blog. And uh, just come see me. Email me. Talk to me. Let me know you're there. And if you need some help, I am here for you. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Joe. I love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah.